Alpha ketoglutarate or AKG is involved in hundreds of enzymatic processes in the body from energy production to collagen synthesis to ammonia removal to methylation and many more. Us muscle heads back in the day used to take arginine AKG which is supposed to help with endurance, vasodilation and strength gains in the gym. Now it's touted as a longevity supplement. So let's dive into this. So what's happening guys, hope your day's going well. Today we're gonna to talk about alpha ketoglutarate, which we're gonna to refer to as AKG to keep it simple in the rest of the video. We have different forms of AKG. We have calcium AKG, we have arginine AKG, and we have regular AKG, which I don't have on me. But I'm just showing these products here to let you guys know that I have used it. And particularly, I ran the calcium AKG for three weeks now to give you guys my experience on it. But I gotta break this down for you guys. So the most talked about subject with AKG is that it plays an important role in the career Reb cycle. This is the most central metabolic pathway within the mitochondria to help produce energy, which plays a key role in cellular respiration or energy production. It does this by pulling a molecule acetyl coenzyme A out of carbs, fats, and proteins. Then after a few steps down, this produces ATP. Then it captures an electron, which that electron is used in the electron transport chain for more ATP production. Of course, there's a bunch of different processes that actually happen in the cell to get to that ATP molecule, but we're not going to go into that. Man, who am I kidding? Wait, what is it? I don't know. So scary. And away we go. A molecule called oxalocytate changes from a gaseous state to a liquid state with the help of acetyl coenzyme A to produce citrate through the processes of using citrate synthase. What? 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 Then the enzyme aconitase reconstructs citrate and turns it into isocitrate. Then the enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase turns isocitrate into AKG. What, 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 what? While at the same time, it releases a CO2 molecule and an NADH molecule. Then through an oxidative decarboxylization process, which is the removal of a carbon atom from AKG, it produces succinyl COA. Say what? Then through the production of succinyl COA synthetase, which synthetase means the joining of two molecules, it converts succinyl COA into succinate. Then through phosphorylation of succinate, it lends a phosphate molecule to GDP and then turns it into GTP. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Then through nucleoside diphosphate kinase, which is an enzyme that transfers a phosphate molecule between two molecules, it takes GTP and turns it into ATP. Then succinate dehydrogenase oxidizes succinate and turns it into fumarate, producing FADH2 and then converting it into malate. Then malate is converted into oxalic citate in the process this starts all over again. And as you can see, it is a giant process to produce energy within the body. There are tons, like I say in my videos, tons of enzymatic processes that have to happen and have to work properly. So let's get back into AKG. Here's one study. Exercise-induced alpha-ketoglutarate acid stimulates muscle hypertrophy and fat loss through OXGR1-dependent adrenal activation. This was published in 2020. The study in mice showed that AKG induces muscle hypertrophy, brown adipose tissue thermogenesis, and white adipose tissue lipolysis in vivo. OXGR1 is a G-coupled protein receptor that triggers a response for reprogramming in parent cells. Parent cells are cells that can actually divide and produce brand new cells. Additionally, it plays a role in stem cell behaviors, especially stem cell differentiation, which is a process where a less specialized stem cell can turn into a more specialized stem cell. And stem cell reprogramming, where a stem cell can actually literally become any type of cell in the body. So how did the supplement go from a workout supplement bonded to arginine years ago to now a health and longevity supplement? Through a few studies, it all started, I think, in 2012 with a worm study. This study increased the worm's lifespan by 50%. And it did this by inhibiting ATP synthase and reducing amyloid beta plaque buildup, which can actually get into receptors and cause problems with signaling with mitochondria function, cause problems with insulin resistance, as well as glucose metabolism. We went on to fruit flies, where these fruit flies lifespan actually increased by 8.54%. The mechanism here increased the activation of AMPK signaling and inhibited mTOR response. Then there's the good old mouse study, where it increased female lifespan by 10% and male lifespan by 5%. This enhanced IL-10 production, which is interleukin-10. This is what they call an anti-inflammatory cytokine, which regulates inflammation throughout the body. It also regulates immune response and the body's response to pathogens. This is all great if you're a worm, a fruit fly, or a mouse. But what if you're a human? 
This brings us to the seven month Rejuvent study where it showed a eight year reduction in biological aging. This was a study funded by Rejuvent. This consisted of 14 females and 28 males. They were all taking 1,000 milligrams of calcium AKG per day. And the females got an average of 6.98% increased in lifespan. And the males got 8.44% increased lifespan. This was through a reduction in DNA methylation. This is a chemical reaction that actually happens internally within cells that helps regulate biological functions and gene expression. Methyl groups actually attached to specific regions within the DNA, switching switches on and off. This process is called epigenetics and it works on the genomes to actually change the way they are expressed or the way they function. DNA methylization is usually pretty good because it helps regulate the identity, the activity, and the development of cells. So what does this all mean? There are very few studies on exactly when we consume AKG, calcium AKG, or arginine AKG, how it actually enters the body, what it actually does, and how it performs. So does it enter the cells when we consume it? Yes and no. According to one of the head researchers, Dr. Brian Kennedy, in rats, it did not enter the cells directly. It did not enter the mitochondria. However, there is another type of cell, the red blood cell. It doesn't have a mitochondria, but they found that 80 plus percent of the AKG in the body is found in the red blood cell. Why is that important? That's because AKG is a precursor to glutamate. Why is that important? Because glutamate is a precursor to glutathione, a powerful antioxidant. You see, red blood cells carry oxygen throughout the body. And when the red blood cells reach the body's tissues and the cells, it releases its oxygen for healthy function. When that oxygen is actually released into the cells and the tissues, it creates reactive oxidative species, which are byproducts of the breaking down of oxygen. This production of ROS, if it gets out of control, can actually cause damage to cells. So having glutathione present is gonna protect those cells from damage. Finishing this off with why someone like myself, a type one diabetic, might take AKG. And that's because it protects the kidneys, or at least it's been shown to protect the kidneys. And that's because of its removal or its reducing effect on ammonia that's generated in the body. And that's because AKG can actually turn into glutamate. And the way glutamate can turn into glutamine is if it binds with an ammonia molecule. And there it is. Then you have glutamate, which then has said to actually protect the microbiome in the gut. So what's my take on AKG or AKG supplements? What was my experience on taking calcium AKG? Well, first thing I'm going to say this, it's been three weeks. Will I stop taking it? Will I just like not take it again when I'm done with it? No, I'm going to actually continue taking AKG. And that's because I'm not a great responder to creatine. So I stopped taking creatine and I wanted to see energy because I want energy, cellular energy and endurance throughout the gym. So a few things that I've noticed taking one gram of calcium AKG was a slight bit of endurance. During training, there was more vasodilation coupled with my pre-workouts. And then I did a couple days with the one gram of calcium AKG with some knack and I put some glutathione in there. I put some pine bark extract and whoa, the pumps were nice all day long on just that. So I know it helps with the endothelial response for nitric oxide. The other thing that I noticed on the third week was I did bump it up to two grams. Uh, by doing that, I actually coupled it with the arginine AKG. So I took one gram of calcium AKG and one gram of arginine AKG. And I really noticed a more of a profound effect on my endurance through the day, my muscle endurance, my awakefulness, my body's awakefulness. So I respond very well to this go figure and maybe because I'm a type 1 diabetic I have different processes going in my body but I am probably not going to take creatine anymore maybe I'll couple it with it and see if there's some kind of a, like a synergistic effect because we, they are two different mechanisms creatine adds the phosphate and then this one as far as AKG works within the Krebs cycle and the metabolic processes to actually lend carbon molecules and stuff like that for other functions and processes so I may couple these two but I had a fantastic experience on it I think if you are like myself i'm 55 if you are 40 and over i mean even if you're younger you can give it a try but if you are 40 and older and you're having trouble i mean you don't respond to creatine as well just like myself that good as far as energy wise then maybe buy this it's cheap buy the arginine akg you can buy regular akg the only difference is is Calcium AKG is supposed to digest slower. AKG itself is rapidly broken down very fast. So they're saying that um, the calcium AKG will be a slower release and then it will affect your energy levels for a much longer period of time during the day. So I didn't notice a difference. Of course, I didn't single one out. I kind of jumped the arginine AKG on the calcium AKG. So I can't really say anything to that. So the other thing I want to talk about is this does not enter the mitochondria when you take it. 
as we said in the video. So this is digested in the intestines and then it's brought into the liver. Then the liver does what it wants with it. Maybe throws it into red blood cells for that oxygen, that glutathione delivery to the, to the uh, other cells in the body for energy production. Who knows what I'm feeling? Or it adds to the AKG pool. That's what I'm feeling like. Like as we get older, we lose a certain amount of AKG production. That's why they're looking into this for longevity. And when we add to that pool, then the AKG that's naturally produced in the body that's already on a cellular level will stay there instead of going to other areas where we're consuming AKG. I don't know if that makes any sense. Makes sense to me. <laughs> Hopefully it makes sense. So that was my experience. That was my take. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's all about information. If you guys have any questions, comments, leave them down below. You know I'm here. <laughs> you guys have a fantastic rest of the day. I'm going to get on with the rest of my day. We'll talk to you next time.